This always makes me, this always stresses me out. Yeah, I think we need to also add to this book tag, like, well, I won't. I won't edit the book tag, I promise. As much as things, so much as things change, so much they stay the same, I don't remember. Something like that. I'm the queen of these sayings. When I say these sayings in my classroom, my students just, it's like crickets, crickets. It's me, Jess. Hope you're all well. I came on to complete the end of the year book tag, which I completed last year. I think I'm actually earlier this year than I was last year in completing this tag, so I'm feeling very proud of myself. <laughs> I'm improving over time. <laughs> last year, I think I filmed this after picking my TBR for December, so I was very close to the end of the year. I haven't picked my TBR for December yet, so I'm feeling, feeling like I'm ahead of the game, so to speak. Okay, don't bite me and don't scratch my skin. I noticed I was watching my end of the year tag video from 2022 and the opening of the video has Nola like scratching me in exactly the same way that he was just scratching me so in some ways my life really hasn't changed at all. <laughs> I thought by now things would be different but no they're really not. As much as things change so much they stay the same. Is that how the saying goes? So this tag was originally created by Ariel Bissett. Love her. She is one of the people who got me interested in booktube in the first place and having a channel in the first place. So thanks Ariel if you ever watch these. So the first question is, are there any books that you started this year that you would like to finish? I know for sure that I have one, actually two. When I go on my Goodreads, I always feel really embarrassed about the number of books that I've started that I haven't finished. And I think there's a way that you can put a DNF shell on Goodreads, but I still really haven't figured it out. So they just kind of hang out there as books that I didn't finish. Here's one. <laughs> so I took Chain Gang All Stars out of the library and I started reading it and I just got distracted. This was back when I was in Maine in the summer and I got distracted. I wasn't feeling well, I got sick. I ended up having to return it to the library. So that is one book that I'd love to get to by the end of the year. I noticed it's nominated in the Goodreads awards. In addition to that, I started a buddy read. If you're watching Jolene, I started a buddy read with Jolene, A Paragon by Callum McCann. This one I am absolutely intending to finish. I'm almost halfway through this, but the topic is, it's so kind of heavy and topical. It's about a Palestinian man and an Israeli man, and they've both experienced losses and it's kind of a combination fiction non-fiction it's about a friendship between these two men and of course given the events of the last month uh, it just puts this all into a completely different perspective and I've been having a little bit of trouble just getting back to it because it's just, it's just also upsetting but I really do want to finish it because obviously it's timely but oh that's in such a horrible way I, I don't know I have so many mixed feelings I'm not sure if I'll be able to but I really want to because I was really enjoying this book and there's no reason not to carry on reading it so I'm gonna try and finish it for the end of the year Jolene no pressure the other one that I started that I realized I wasn't gonna get finished for this past month October I'm, I'm gonna be filming my October wrap-up but I started out by Natsuo Kurino and I really want to finish it but it's quite it's translated from the Japanese, but it's just quite dense. The writing, I only got about 40 pages in and it's quite good, but I can tell that it's a very slow burn, at least for the first part of it. It seems to be starting out quite slowly. I don't know, I was just, I, I was having trouble going back to it with so many other books that I was reading that were, I guess the pace was a little bit faster. So I'm hoping to get back to this before the end of the year, but could just be wishful thinking. <laughs> Those are three that are not DNF'd, they just kind of got abandoned. Another one that comes to mind that I took out of the library that I didn't get a chance to get to is I Have Some Questions For You by Rebecca Mackay. I also took out of the library and did not manage to really get going. So that's been happening to me a lot this year. I've been really utilizing my local library, but it means that I've been, I'll go and I'll just get so excited about the books and then they, I don't get to them, which is totally okay. So those are a few that I would love to get to before the end of this year. 
quarter. The second question, do you have an autumnal book to transition into the end of the year with? I just started, I, I'm in the middle of reading a book that feels very autumnal. I'm reading this with Lori, The Matrix by Lauren Croft. It's about a woman who is a bastard child who ends up in an abbey and eventually becomes the abbess. It's set in the Middle Ages and I'm really enjoying it. It does feel very autumnal. I don't know if it's just because it's set in the Middle Ages. <laughs> That's why it feels autumnal to me. And I really want to read The Bastard Wilds, which is her new book, but I'm not sure I'll get to it by the end of the year. It could be the next one that we read together just to have a kind of a continuation. I don't think the Faster Wilds is, I don't think it's a series, but I think it's a similar, there's something connected between the books. Lori mentioned, I'm not sure what's connected between the books, but that feels very winter autumnal leading into winter. So really enjoying this one about halfway through. And then I just started, this was one that I pulled at the beginning of the month from my wrapped TBR, Golden Hill by Francis Spufford. This, I didn't realize this, but the beginning, the book opens on November 1st. It opens with, well, it's set in what is going to be, well, it says a small town on the tip of Manhattan Island so what is going to become New York. In 1746, this young man comes off the boat from England and it's about how he makes his way. Apparently this book has a really big payoff. It starts on November 1st and I noticed I was just looking at it and it goes all the way through to Christmas. So it's like the perfect time. It's a perfect transition book. And it was the Costa Book Award winner in 2016 and I've heard nothing but really good things about it. Question number three, is there a new release you're still waiting for? I actually found this quite difficult. I looked over the list of new releases and it's kind of a fun it's a fun thing to do if you want to add it to your TBR. There aren't that many books out this year that I really want to read immediately but I did notice a couple of books that piqued my interest. Well first off there are two books that were nominated for the Booker. The first is All the Little Bird Hearts by Victoria Lo Lloyd Barlow. It was long listed for the 2023. I don't think it made the short list, but it's about, it's written from the point of view of an autistic woman and she and her headstrong adolescent daughter are befriended by a glamorous charismatic couple with dark ulterior motives. And I've heard little whisperings around booktube about this book being really, really good. It comes out December 5th. I think that could be a great one to add to my TBR. Our book club was discussing reading Prophet Song by Paul Lynch. That also comes out out December 12th. I think it's been shortlisted actually for the Booker. So those are two Booker books that are coming out in Canada that I am curious about. And then there's some science fiction books and dystopian. I don't know. I'm still on my science fiction dystopian kind of kick. Maybe I'll never get off of it. Maybe that's just a that's maybe that's just a sweet spot for me for reading in addition to literary literary fiction. But there's this book that's coming out on December 5th called Yours for the Taking by Gabrielle Korn and it's set in 2050. I'll be talking about Camp Zero which actually I ended up DNFing last month. I'll be talking about that in my reading wrap-up for October. I've just been looking for something to add to my collection of dystopian books. I think it's a post-COVID. This is about a woman and her girlfriend who live in what's left of Brooklyn. They're having a difficult time have finding happiness in life because of climate change and the sort of destruction of the world around them and soon is as soon it won't be safe outside at all. The only people guaranteed survival are the ones whose applications are accepted to the Inside Project, a series of weather safe city sized structures around the world. This is a very common theme in writing in books I've noticed. <laughs> Might be like a collective trauma that everyone's experiencing. It says at once a mesmerizing story of queer love, betrayal, and chosen family and an unflinching indictment of cis corporate feminism. Gabrielle Korn's Yours for the Taking holds a mirror to our own world in all its beauty and horror. That sounds so good to me now. And then the other one that I noticed was Sunny by Colin O'Sullivan. This is a riveting technological thriller following a woman whose life is upended when her husband and son disappear in a mysterious plane crash. Then she has to, she has this subsequent crazy making interaction with her, with AI. She's left alone with her home robot AI system. And then 
it proposes a conspiracy theory and I think she goes down this massive rabbit hole with this home robot. So that sounds really good to me. Sunny is a haunting character study of an anxious woman teetering in an anxious time and that sounds that sounds cathartic to me. Louise Kennedy has a set of short stories coming out December 5th as well called The End of the World is a Cul-de-Sac. So it says women's lives are etched by poverty, material, emotional, sexually, but also splashed by beauty and sometimes even joy. This question always stresses me out. What are three books you want to read before the end of the year? And then I run around my house trying to find the three books that I want to read by the end of the year and I realize there's about 50 that I would like to read before the end of the year. So yeah, I know. We all say the same thing here on BookTube, right? We're all, we're all trying to read more than is even humanly possible. But let's talk about ones for sure that I have for sure on the docket. First, we can talk about my my goals in 2023. I had a list of 10 classics that I wanted to read for 2023. So, And I've done really well with that list. I've, I've read most of them. I'm currently reading North and South. I also had Invisible Cities by Italo Calvino on that list. This is a little short book, so it might be easy for me to squeeze that one in before the end of the year. I also had Heartburn by Nora Ephron on that list, which I would love to read. And I feel like there's something like a Christmassy hol holiday vibe, at least to this cover. I don't know, some recollection of it taking place over the holidays. I could be wrong. Maybe it was Thanksgiving. I'm not sure. So that could be a great one. I also have Invisible Man on that list. I also talked about this in my big books video earlier in this year with some ideas about completing the big books challenge in 2023. But this feels, I, people have told me that this is really good, but that it's challenging. So I'm a little concerned. I might not be able to finish it by the end of this year. So it, it might not happen. If not, I do intend to get to it at some point in my life. <laughs> so maybe next year. Other books that I really want to get to by the end of the year. So just referring back to that big books video, I know it says only three, but I have to talk about a few more than three. Looking back at that big books video, one of the books on there was Jonathan and Friends and the Corrections. And this I know is, it takes place over Christmas. So I thought it would be great to read this over Christmas. A lot of people have expressed their issues with Franzen, but I still want to read this because I've heard really good things about it as well. And then I can sort of decide for myself. I'll go in with those concerns in mind. But I've taken out of the library Fane by Anne Marie McDonald, which I really am for sure. I know I took it out of the library, but I really want to read this by the end of the year. I've just been hearing nothing but fantastic things. And of course, because she's a Canadian writer, it's a big book. It takes place in Scotland. In, and I think it's really interesting that one of the main characters has a lot of mysteries in her life. It takes place in the late 19th century and it's about Charlotte Bell who is growing up at Fane. So Fane is a place, it's a vast and lonely estate straddling the border between England and Scotland. She's been kept from the world by her adoring father, Lord Henry Bell, owing to a mysterious condition. So, oh, it just sounds so good and I, I've been hearing really good things. So I'm definitely gonna get to that one before the end of the year. And then another book that I got out of the library that I talked about in my recent TBR video is I am homeless if this is not my home. And I think this might also be a good kind of transition book, although I'm not sure. Someone wrote in my comments how fantastic it is on that video. And I remember when I was reading about anticipated books or book recommendations for the summer from the Globe and Mail, I remember reading the description of this and thinking how good it sounded. So I kind of like to get to this before it's too bad. I can renew three times. I can renew books three times from the library. So it's a possibility that I'll get to that. Here. Other books that I'd like to get to that I've talked about on my channel so many different times that I haven't gotten to. Odia Pinero, Elena Knows. I'd love to get to Greenwood by Michael Christie. I talked about this. I can't remember what video I talked about this one in. <laughs> Maybe in a book haul. Joan, which is a historical fiction, which I also talked about in my recent book haul. I mean, those are just a few of the books that I'd love to get to by the end of the year. I have more here, but I won't, I won't go on. <laughs> It just makes me feel inadequate when I answer this question. <laughs> no, question number five. Is there a book you think could shock you and become your favorite book of the year? It's not so much that I think it could shock me, but the ones that I just talked about, a couple of them that I just talked about, I think Golden Hill has a potential to be a favorite. I think I Am Homeless Is Not My Home has a potential to be really fantastic and fame, I think. So not necessarily shocking me, but and not necessarily favorite of the year, but I I am hoping that those will be really good 
I mean, I'm always hoping the books that I read will be really good, but sometimes I'm reading them just to see, you know what I mean? So sometimes that, sometimes it's not clear. Have you already started making plans for next year? So that's a really good question. I, I have been making very loose, unformulated plans in my mind for next year. There are a couple of vlog projects that I had for this year that didn't come to fruition that I might revisit. One was a Booker Prize, former Booker Prize winning books vlog, which I didn't get to. I definitely I'm going to do a second installment of the college reading vlog. I already have one book chosen for that and this time around it's going to be books from my daughter's first year of university and or maybe from English teachers that I know. What else? I'm definitely going to do my wrapped TBR again. So I still have books left for my wrapped TBR from 2022. At the end of 22 I wrapped books that I didn't read that year that I intended to read that I'd listed on my TBRs. And I think I'm going to do the same thing again this year. It just means that the wrapped TBR is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. But I also think it's super fun. And I did make some progress. I think I've read 10 books off of that wrapped TBR over the course of the year, which is really good. I have 13 left over, but I might unwrap them, reshuffle them. We'll see. That's a video for January. And then in terms of goals, I'll probably try to read 10 more classics because I did really well with my classics list this year. And I think next year I'm going to challenge myself a little bit more for book two. One thing that I can say for sure is that I volunteered to participate as a judge in next year's booktube prize in the fiction category. We'll see how much time I have to participate in how many rounds I'll be able to read the books for, but I'm hoping, I have really high hopes for that because I think it seems like a lot of fun and a lot of booktubers that I really respect have been judges and it just seems like a natural thing to do for me because last year at this time, if I look at my last year at this time, I couldn't tell you how many subscribers I had because I don't keep track of subscriber counts. But last year at this time when I posted my, yeah, so if I look at my end of the year book tag from last year, I had 180 three views, which is actually pretty good. But I think it was around that time that my channel began to pick up a little bit of momentum. And obviously since then I have tons of new subscribers. Thank you all so much. Like I say, I think it makes sense just as a natural progression for me to now volunteer to be a judge. I think it might have been a little bit unrealistic to do that if I didn't have more subscribers to my channel. So that is very exciting. I'm very excited about that. And I think I should say here, I'll leave a link to the video below where the announcement was made calling for judges because if you have a booktube channel and you're interested in participating, they're still looking for people, I think. So yes. So those are my, my plans-ish for next year. I'm not going anywhere. I hope you keep visiting me in this on this little corner of the internet, in this little corner of booktube, and I will see you in my next video. Bye! Yeah, I hope you stick with me. I hope you stay with me on this, in this course. I keep you, keep, I hope you, blah, blah, blah. Like if I just, oh, that's not mine. That's a girl. I was like 4.5K, that's not me. <laughs> Maybe I was just so traumatized by COVID that I need to process it through reading dystopia novels. That seems like maybe what's going on with me. <laughs>